internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe. Did you get your sound turned up yet? You got to turn your sound up and remember to like, comment, and share. So I've got a new friend online. Her name is Diane, and the last name is Gogan, and she lives where it's warm. Are you there, Diane? I am. Yay. Good morning, Brad. Arizona. Yes, sunny Arizona. We're, we're a little rainy today, but typically lots of sun and warm. Well, I would think that the rain out there kind of <laughs> evaporates as soon as it hits the sidewalk or something, right? It does. The, the desert's very efficient at uh, helping it disappear very quickly. So it disappears like magic. There you go. <laughs> so, do are you married? You got kids? How long you lived in Arizona? I we've been in Arizona for nine years. My husband and I. Um, our kids are all four legged horses and dogs. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe you had some centaurs. Well, not that we know of, but you know, you never know. <laughs> you never know who shows up at the door. So you lived there for nine years, huh? We've been here for nine years. We got we lived uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah, prior to that, and just got tired of the snow. Um, like we actually like the heat and the warm. So even the you know 110, 115 degree days are much more bearable for us than shoveling snow. Totally get it. I'm up here in Minneapolis, and I lived in the same house for 53 years, then got married, moved to the west side, and bought a house, and I didn't like the mowing the lawn and the shoveling the snow and all that kind of stuff, but uh, yeah. then we moved to Asheville, North Carolina for a couple of years, then we moved back here to Minneapolis, but we're in an apartment. <laughs> We've got people to do that laborious work. I'm not used to getting <laughs> scalases. Gotta love people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what do you do out there for your occupation? What keeps you busy? So what keeps me busy is I work with people who, who have a pretty solid foundation. You know, they've got a business or a career that, that they enjoy or are good at, but feel like there's still something missing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like they're, they're not complete. So it's, it's often that, that piece of them that you might call a, a, um, comes from your soul or your heart, you know, that, that true essence of who you are that often we separate and segregate from our, yep. from our outside life to our inside life. So there, I find that a lot of people, once they reach a certain point or, you know, kind of hit that midlife age, start to think, you know, start to really look at what do they want to do? What do they want their legacy to be? What kind of monument, if you will, do they want to leave to the world around them? And so I help them evolve and create that vision and integrate it into what they're doing. You know, so many people think they have to turn their life upside down to really express their true essence when really what I find working with people is it's just a matter of integrating and weaving kind of magical, if you sure. will, Alchemy. that together uh, and really create a really powerful transformation where, where they now are showing up much more powerfully in the world. They are feeding that personal spiritual side of themselves while doing great things in the world around them. So, so that's, are, are you essentially a life coach then? Is that what the yeah, generic sort of, title? Yeah, you know, that would kind of be the generic. I know that it's people. it's been overused. My wife is a coach, but she is a teacher at the University of Minnesota. So she's sort of a teacher, coach, consultant kind of. She, she knows how to do that kind of thing. And I, I don't like coaching myself. I get frustrated when people don't... Uh, take action and all that kind of stuff. So I'm a big action taker. I'm just like, get it done. Sometimes I take action too fast. But right. part of what you're talking about, the integration, that's what the Synergy Collaborative is all about. The, the career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. And finance doesn't necessarily mean your career. It's how is your money flowing? And you got to have that in harmony with your relationship and your spiritual beliefs and your fitness and your wellness. And, and if you have a job or if you've got a business, it has to sort of be in harmony kind of thing. But I want to give a little shout out to you as a coach or the coaching profession because once in a while I use coaches too, but I'm being I'm stubborn because I'm not, I'm an entrepreneur, but I think it's very important that a person utilizes a, a another person to kind of reflect back to them certain things because they might be going forward and they're frustrated and 
they don't realize that they're going forward and frustrated and that attracts more frustration and going forward more frustrated and someone like you can adjust the sail and say maybe if you shine some light on it it was a little maybe be happy try that once <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of times we need that outside reflection. And so one of the other unique things that I do in my practice is I do equine assisted coaching. Oh, with horses? So, yes. I, so I, use- I was instructed to read a book and I think they were based in Arizona. It was Mirval or something like that. Mirval, yes. That's, that's, very, that's cool that you do that kind of stuff because horses kind of can really put you in line. <laughs> well, they do. And they, they have that, that special, you know, over thousands of years, they lived in the wild. They had to know, they had to be able to see or sense the unseen. If there was somebody waiting at the water hole, you know, looking for dinner, and they were on the menu, you know, that sort of right. thing. They had to know when <laughs> storms were coming and all different kinds of things. So they really developed that ability to tune into the unseen. So I, I got a quick question for you then, because yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting, but I, I really dig this kind of stuff. We got a local person that does that kind of stuff too. But so you work with the horses. Do you have to have people there with you, or can you possibly do what you do you do remotely? For the most part, uh, people are here. I am actually exploring. You know, as, as we all do, look to expand and grow and touch people. You know, reach out to people in different ways. I am looking at doing some experimenting with some online things as well, because, you know, as you well know, a lot of this is energy. A lot of it's vibration. A lot of it is intent. And um, really the magic of working with the horses is that you and I can sit here and talk about something all day long. But then when we're done talking, you have to go out in the world and figure out how to implement it. Yeah. And why wouldn't you be able to, I mean, with the technology these days, why wouldn't you be able to do a thing just like what we're doing now and then have them go online with their phone or go on their horse with their phone and you'd be mm-hmm. able to kind of sense what the horse is sensing. And that's yeah, very absolutely. cool. I love it. Absolutely. Um, and, what, and part of the magic of working with horses is, you know, like I was saying, when, when you do traditional coaching or therapy or anything, you talk about things and then the person has to go back out into their lives and figure out how to, to work that and, and make it happen. When you actually do the coaching with the horses, you actually do that thing right in the moment that you've talked about. So, and the horse responds accordingly and you either adjust it or you keep doing it depending on what kind of response you got. So now it becomes part of your story. It, it, it's cell memory. So that now when you go back out into the world, you can say, this is how I implemented it with a horse and this is how it looked and felt. And now I can do it in, in my life. So it's a much easier, much quicker transition. This is so fun. I, I do these interviews all, for people all over the world and learn different things. I just got done doing an interview with a guy that has a uh, medicine cap thing that, that, that it's, it's smart. It understands when it's open and what time it's open. And if, if a person like uh, has elderly parents that, that need to take their medication and they forget someday, it'll send a message to your cell phone saying, hey, grandma or grandpa or mom forgot to take her medicine on Wednesday. <laughs> so the stuff that you're doing coaching with a horse, I think that's something that people don't really think about. Um, mm-hmm. Just the concept. That's very cool. I love it. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so how do we get a hold? How does someone get a hold of you if they want to do something like that? Either come out to your, do you have like a ranch? I have, yes, I have a small property in North Phoenix. We're up in the foothills of Phoenix, so we're out of the city. Um, and so you can reach me at firehorseranch.com. That's the website. Uh, my email direct is diana, D-I-A-N-A, at firehorseranch.com. And you can get out on the website, um, lots of blogs. We, I do you know, a lot of real personal intense work. And we also do a lot of um, smaller fun events out here as well. So always lots going on. And I work with a lot of locals as well as I have, we call them snowbirds here. Right. Uh, people from Minnesota, actually. <laughs> yeah, why do they <laughs> leave? In, yeah, who come in for the, for, the, um, for the winter. And I do have a lot of clients. So that, that's the time of year we work. So do you do now. retreats and stuff like that? I do, yes. Okay, we should talk further on that because that's something I like to do. I've been uh, working at trying to get some people to go to like Costa Rica and Tulum for like yoga and wellness retreats, but it'd be cool to do it right in the States here and be able to get a charter bus of snowbirds and send them down to go ride horses. That sounds like that'd be fun. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) We'll send a flock down. (laughs) (laughs) 
So before I let you go, I want to ask my favorite question, and this is my big why question. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll take this recording and pop it up to YouTube and put the embed code on social media and send it out to the world. And if you could like, comment, and share, like, like this, like, like, comment, share, all that kind of stuff. Perfect card. Here's the big why question. Why are you doing this? Why aren't you like a grade school teacher? Or why aren't you like a fashion model? Or why aren't you like a yoga instructor? Why are you doing this? Because I, I had those things. I was I was in the corporate world for a while, had climbed the ladder doing really well, and felt that just like I just described, there was a part of me that was missing. There was part of me that I didn't feel could integrate into that world. And so that's when I started kind of pursuing my own path, seeing what that looked like, how that, how that all happened. And uh, the big pivotal point was my husband sat me down one day and said, I can't do this anymore. You know, I was on call 24 seven, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I can't live like this. You know, we need to make a choice. And that was my big wake up call where I realized that I needed to, it was time to figure out how to integrate those two worlds to bring out that, that spiritual part of myself that to, to, do that greater purpose that I was here to do that really makes me happy. Not that the rest of my life is horrible. Got it. Okay. So you kind of, you're preaching what you practiced. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> this, this knowledge didn't just come to me in the middle of the night. <laughs> it was sweat and te- blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> Got it. Well, I would like to talk further with you on this. So I'm going to sign this one off. And like I said, beam it up to the universe. My, my, my wife, Monica, she always laughs when I say, I'm going to beam this bad boy up. But that's what I'm going to kind of do. I'm going to put it up there and let people find it. So I appreciate you taking the day today on Synergy Cafe and uh, the Synergy Collaborative. So be well, peace, love, and happiness. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brad.